I would folk, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today we're going to be reviewing the differences between vanilla and live World of Warcraft. There were a few good things about vanilla, but there was also a lot of bad things and a lot of improvements have obviously been made to the game, but nonetheless you may think that, you know, certain things have been changed for the worst. In this video we're talking about the best of both, this won't be a video just crap talking the hell out of Legion or whatever expansion is currently out as you currently watch this video, since overall I think the live, live World of Warcraft is pretty solid and it likely always will be. I'll start by giving a reason why vanilla was better and then follow by giving a reason why it was worse or how Live World of Warcraft has improved and then we'll keep switching around like that and there will be a total of 10 reasons. Remember to leave a comment after you've watched the video about why you either preferred van Vanilla or Live World of Warcraft. So firstly, I think one of the biggest appeals of Vanilla World of Warcraft and private servers like Nastarius is a sense of an immersive adventure that the game encourages you to experience. When you start playing Vanilla WoW, you know, you kind of felt like Gandalf just turned up at your hobbit hole and told you to go on, on an adventure, and that's exactly how most classic RPGs used to feel. And it's something that actually the Witcher 3 replica replicated quite well, surprisingly. But now, you know, to level up in World of Warcraft, all you have to do is simply this. When you jump into a dungeon, all you do is progress through a cave or a fortress and grind mobs and that's literally all you do for about 36 hours until you get to max level. It is a choice whether you want to grind dungeons, but the problem is doing dungeons is easier and faster than levelling normally. I remember when I first started playing the game over a decade ago and just getting ridiculously excited by literally just looking at unexplored locations on the map. Or whenever I looked, took the flight path from Ironforge to Stormwind and looked down at the Searing Gorge, I felt like I was flying over Mordor or something, I just couldn't wait to actually finally get there. I mean, there's a huge landmass in World of Warcraft and people just like barely see it. I haven't even experienced the like vanilla quest revamp implemented in Cataclysm and I don't think many people have since, you know, by then the Dungeon Finder was out. Back during vanilla, dungeon XP was slower than manual, manual questing, but you still did do the dungeon since they gave you like a, a number of quests to go and do which gave a good amount of XP and obviously there were some good rewards and it basically works worked uh, similarly to how it does in Legion where the quest chain that in the zone would lead up to the dungeon. And that all sounds fine and dandy but unfortunately Vanilla World of Warcraft was one hell of a grind. Some people liked how the leveling took you know anywhere between 5 to 10 days playtime but personally I think it eventually gets a little bit boring after a while, especially when in some cases there wasn't enough quest experience to finish certain zones, so you just have to like grind places with a high abundance of mobs. There's also a lot of uh, reputations you had to farm in order to get to, you know certain items or certain special enchants which made bosses easier to defeat. A lot of classes had to do a lot of uh, you know grinding, like for instance how a, a warlock had to grind soul shards before a raid just to give people health, health stones, or how a hunter had to grind like loads of ranged mobs just to grind up his pets, ex you know uh, his pets' experience. Since you know if you tamed a low level pet, then it would you know it would stay at that level and wouldn't scale up to you. I mean, at one point it scaled up like five levels before you, then it was a little bit less, and then now it just goes to like level 110 instantly. Overall, there were there was a lot of um, you know time-consuming nuisances in Vanilla World of Warcraft, and the game is definitely better without them. You know, another thing that was kind of annoying is how you had to pay for your, your you know your spells and all that. That was just kind of really irritating. It goes without saying that once you have full heirlooms and, and uh, enchants on your new ult, then leveling is just a complete face roll, since most of the time you can just one-shot mobs with like one spell, and it provides very little challenge unless you put, pull about twenty different mobs at once. You know, back in vanilla, the challenge was, um, you know, fair enough, sometimes the challenge was a little bit irritating, but most of the time it just made the game more fun and interesting since you had to compose a strategy a lot of the time when you encountered mobs grouped up together. Like, for instance, a mage would have to work out which mob would be, like, the best to polymorph, or as a hunter, you know, you, you basically tried to figure out how you were going to trap one of the mobs when they came running flying towards you. Threat also made leveling quite interesting and was something you had to control as a pet, um, as a class with a pet. Another great thing was group quests. I mean, when when you had to like either basically go out into the world and kill a boss, like a world boss, or journey into some kind of area such as a dwarven fortress to take down like a group of elite mobs, 
which also made the game just more of a social experience. I mean, it's based, they were basically open world, like dungeons, but it weren't dungeons, they weren't phased in, but you had to go to an area which like was like a dungeon to complete certain quests and get some really good uh, rewards. And you, you were just basically always encouraged to do group content like that to get a big XP rewards and uh, decent items. These days there is a much bigger appeal for end game content in World of Warcraft which is why less development time has been put into the leveling process of a game. Well, well, I think it's been put into it, it's just like, I think it's just been a little, little forgotten about. But back in vanilla the game wasn't just about raiding and for a while the raiding was actually pretty easy. Um, but the reason why life was better, it, has, it basically has, had better, has better raiding than vanilla is simply because the raid mechanics are more interesting and techno technologically advanced. I mean, some raids in vanilla had no real mechanics other than, you know, pushing you into the air now and again or something. Or there were like bosses with more advanced mechanics, but mostly it was quite simple. I mean, not simply in simple in difficulty though. I mean, there were still sometimes extreme, extremely difficult raids like Nax Ramas, which is like the most difficult raid ever to be released. But it mostly it was that was just because of scaling and mathematical reasons. The one big thing everyone had to control and worry about, you know, as in raiding, um, was basically threat, which is bit you know it's kind of like it was kind of boring since on. You know, Anixia, for instance, when she was on the floor, like, none of the DPS could use any of her abilities unless she had some kind of spell where it would reduce your threat. I mean, I remember playing on my hunter, I do an aim shot, I might be able to push in two, but if you look on the threat meter, then you know that if you do one more, then you're going to aggro the boss, so you had to, like, use a feign death. But it also kind of meant that mages and warlocks literally just did one damage for the ground phase, so you could, all you could do was use your wand, which was pretty boring. I mean, nowadays there's no boring restriction like that. You can, you know, just cast all your spells and everything, and it's just generally a lot cooler these days. I mean, you know, you can, like, so for instance, like Spine of Deathwing, when you're flying on the back of a dragon, slowly trying to destroy his armor, then trying to walk out, or walk across a conveyor belt, or dodging big trains. I mean, raiding just is generally cooler and more interesting. So now I'm going to talk about talents. You may prefer the talent system, but uh, well, the current talent system. But I know a lot of people. You know, you can just kind of find it boring, especially when you can't swap around your talents and there isn't really a lot of choices since they don't provide any real advantage. Like for instance, right now, as of 7.0, Enhancement Shaman basically only has one talent build. You cannot swap any of your talents because the talent build is best for single target damage and AoE damage and survivability and everything. So there isn't really any, like, talent choices. And it's just a little bit boring, which is why, and, you know, it's why I and many people prefer the old talent system. So it kind of it quite it required a little bit more thought and strategy to compose the perfect build. I mean, some people made different builds for more specific situations. Like for instance, I remember a full there was a full frost mage build that was just better for survivability and therefore better for farming. You know, back in the days of Wrath on my DK, I composed an ultimate solo survival spec for doing all raids, which allowed me to have like six death runes, which was like. You know, quite a rare thing back in those days since you had different rune types. I mean, I could use like three death strikes in a row, so basically I was doing it before it was easy, basically before it was cool. I also created another unique spec for Hunter uh, back in vanilla, which was like the perfect pre raid spec since it increased your hit chance, health pull, and crit chance without having, you know, a high crit chance on your gear. One of the big problems with vanilla was how many uh, specs were basically just completely unviable. Like, you could basically only use one spec per class apart from warrior which was dreadful for any hybrid class since if it meant that you you just basically meant you would be forced to be a healer i it actually forced me to re-roll my shaman you know when i discovered that to a hunter since i, I was you know definitely not playing a healer i mean i don't enjoy playing the healer and i'm leveling up a class and thinking yeah i'll just play enhancement and then it just turns out no you're just gonna have to play healer and that is pretty that is a pretty dreadful thing. I mean these days it's obviously a little bit better, at least you don't have to play a healer all the time for uh, you know any any class that has a healing spec. And your tank specs are all viable. I mean back in vanilla there's only one tech uh, tech. There's only one tank spec that was viable and that was protection warrior. But some specs um still get unfortunate unfortunately some specs still get thrown on the rubbish heap like uh you know, elemental at the moment is pretty pants, unfortunately. But you could at least still make them, you know, you can make them work. If you're more of a casual player, you can probably play with less viable specs and get away with it and still enjoy it. But back in vanilla, it just wasn't really going to happen. Now let's talk about PvP. Personally, I think the PvP content in vanilla was more appropriate to how PvP should function in an MMO. And obviously, I'm talking about old school Alteric Valley. 
It was easily the most fun I've ever experienced while playing PvP in World of Warcraft because it's how an MMO PvP should be and it's how most of MMOs do their PvP. I mean, you want two big raids trying to destroy each other's fortresses and castles, it feels like you're actually part of a big battle. I also have a lot of fun playing Warband, where there's like 200 players battling against each other in one battle trying to take each other's like castle. I mean, back in the day, it was about it was about raid pushes. You you had to push your team to capture certain bunkers or towers or graveyards, and you could you know you could try and do it on your own. But there was the opportunity to spawn bosses like the Ice Boss or the Wolf Riders, like actual NPCs in the battleground, which will help you push your forward, uh, forces forward by killing the enemy team. It also, you had to be careful though with the Ice Boss. I mean, you didn't want him to go jumping into a race straight away, since he'll just become you know, just die because he becomes more powerful as he kills players, so you have to help him farm like smaller groups, uh, you know, farm smaller groups of players so that he can get fed and become more powerful, then he could just like beat the crap out of an enemy raid and he could heal him, like it was like having another ally, it's like having an ice boss ally, which was just dope. And when the battle had been going on for like two hours, a big troll boss would spawn in the middle of the map where most people had to like travel through, um, I can't remember what it's specifically called, which it kind of meant that this boss would just run and all his guards would one shot people passing you. Um, like if you're trying to pass, then you just get one shot by his boss. So you you had to kill him, but you couldn't you couldn't tank him unless you were a tank. But like even if you did have a tank on your team, I mean the enemy team would probably just kill you anyway. You couldn't tank it where the boss is. So what I used to do as a hunter, I would pull the boss with a taunt shot and run back to the one of the towers and count him round the tower until everyone's like slowly brought him down. Because obviously the other team can't like do too much damage otherwise they'll get aggro as well. So it's all about getting dots up and doing white damage and being really careful you don't pull aggro off the hunter who's counting them around. But anyway, yeah, I'll uh, stop talking about my love of Outer Valley. And even though I've just gone and said all that, undoubtedly there have been improvements for PvP in World of Warcraft, especially now that there is this like ability segregation introduced in Legion, which should have you know been introduced basically as soon as Arena was a thing, because Arena for a long time made PvP imbalanced and it actually made uh, specs less in like less interesting in raiding. You know, since if you had like a very maneuverable melee, very fun to play to have like evade mechanics and you know it would just be incredibly overpowered in arena so then it will just get nerfed and therefore that class will be less interesting and less fun. But now with this ability segregation then hopefully PvP can become more balanced without making classes less interesting in PvP. At the end of the day um, it will always be more balanced than vanilla PvP since you could literally one shot people in vanilla. I'm talking about casting one spell and then that enemy player is dead. Like if you got really lucky as Enhanced Bashan with Wind Fury procs then you swung your sword well, it wouldn't be a sword, you swing your weight, mace, well it would be a two-handed mace back then, your two-handed hammer, your mace, and then I'll be it. I mean, one hit, one melee hit and they're just dead. It's literally as stupid and mental as that. And for the last reason why I preferred Vidal, I'm going to talk about a more specific reason, unique to Hunter, and that is simply that the pets were more interesting. These days, for some reason, Hunter pets have become more standardised, and they're just generally less unique. For instance, there used to be a, like this rare wasp in Zangamash, which gave you like a cheeky extra stun. The best raiding pet in vanilla was a pet called Lupos. I mean, a lot of people thought it was broken too, but it actually wasn't. And this a Lupos basically did like shadow damage instead of physical damage, which meant it ignored the boss's armor for whatever damage it did. And a lot of people thought it was, you know, a lot of people thought it was either the Wailing Caverns Raptor or Broken Tooth for their really low attack speed. But with Lupos, you could also get the raid wide buff and. You know, it was just, and he was a little tanky. You weren't just thinking about pet, uh, pets for like their DPS either. You sometimes thinking about their strong resistances. There was another turtle, turtle uh, pet called Snarler, I think. It might not be called Snarler actually, but there's there's another one which has this like ridiculously um, high resistance. So you'd bring the high resistance pet to survive all the AOE fire damage, and he would actually survive the fight. But overall, um, the pets were just a little bit more interesting, and their mechanics. Um, were uh, a lot more like immersive since you had to like keep feeding them to keep them happy and train them up properly by killing other mobs rather than just getting everything for free in the spell book. And now let's round up the video. I think uh, you know over the course of World of Warcraft's uh, life the game has gradually improved at delivering a more cinematic and story driven experience through improved voice acting and more cinematics. I mean especially since in vanilla there were there was very little voice acting 
But we, you know, um, we didn't really see any good cinematics until we completed the Dragon Blight questline and got the Raftgate cinematic, which was absolutely mind goggling. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Be sure to check out the video, video link in the description for more similar videos. And remember to, to comment any reasons why you preferred either vanilla or live World of Warcraft. And uh, leave a like. My name is the Metagoblin, and until my next video, ciao.